Today we're talking about tracking and optimizing the savings rate, the single most important factor for achieving financial independence. We're also providing a free tool that you can use to help get started. The simple idea behind reaching financial independence is to save as much money as possible and to invest it so that eventually you can live off those investments without depending on employment. For most, this occurs at the traditional retirement age when someone exiting the workforce is able to live off a combination of pensions, investments and savings. However, with proper planning, this can be achieved much, much sooner. And of course, as we've mentioned in previous videos, the ultimate goal of achieving financial independence is not that you stash away money for the sake of it, but ultimately the goal is to increase the agency you have over your time. Okay, let's jump into this video. Let's go. A critical idea to consider at the outset is that you can't manage what you can't measure. It's not much of an understatement to say that it will be nearly impossible to reach financial independence if you don't have a solid understanding of what you're spending your money on. I know plenty of high earners that have a very poor understanding of their savings rate. They have very, a very loose understanding of what they're spending their money on. The problem is that at the end of the day, the savings rate is a critical factor for achieving financial success. A very high earner with a very low savings rate is going to take a much longer time to reaching financial independence than someone who's a low earner with a high savings rate. All right, let's illustrate the importance of this concept with two examples, which reflect uh, two different earning capacities and two different uh, spending lifestyles and see how, what's the difference that it takes each of the cases to reach financial independence. Okay, so on the one hand, we have Marcus who has a net take-home pay, in other words, after taxes, of $50,000. And he spends annually 30,000 of it. In other words, he's saving 20,000 per year, which is not bad. And on the other hand, we have Rachel, who's a business owner and has a net take-home pay of $300,000 per year. She spends 250,000 of it, and therefore uh, saves $50,000 each year, which is $30,000 more than Marcus. Who is in a better shape, who in a better financial situation in relation to achieving financial independence? Well, it turns out that despite Rachel having six times more salary than Marcus, it takes her nine years longer to reach financial independence, to be independent from employment. Why is this? Why is this? Well, because what matters ultimately is not how much you save in absolute terms, but how much you save relative to your lifestyle uh, expenses, relative to your annual costs. And of course, the first step towards optimizing your savings rate is to actually calculate it. It's a very simple calculation, as we're going to display here on the screen. It's dividing your net savings divided by your net take-home pay and multiplying it by 100. So as observed in Marcus and Rachel's example, Marcus has a 40% savings rate, while Rachel has a 16% savings rate. And this largely explains why one takes a lot longer to reaching financial independence. Increasing your savings rate can be done in two ways. You can either increase your salary, your net uh, take-home pay, or you can reduce your monthly ex and annual expenses. In today's video, we're focusing on the latter strategy since for most, it's the easier strategy to start with. It's important to build the habit of tracking your monthly expenses. Building this new muscle is the small price to pay for unlocking a lot more freedom in your life. Are you willing to spend 10 to 15 minutes at the end of each month recording your monthly expenses in order to shorten your career by a decade or more? And a simple Excel sheet is probably the best approach since you'll be able to store the information easily and compare the data across months. All right, and I've gone ahead and created a simple Excel template for you to start out with, which is intends to cover three main goals. So firstly, to record easily your monthly expenses. Secondly, to calculate and to track over time your savings rate, how it changes over time. And thirdly, to track your timeline to reaching financial independence. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, as you open the Excel sheet, the tab is November 2023. And the first 14 rows are actually kind of like the summary information. What you have to actually enter starts in row 15. And on columns B to C, you enter your income sources. You have a space here for two. Uh, you can add more, more um, rows as needed. Um, and the columns E to H, we have 
each and every single one of the expenses. And first are the recurrent ones and then the one-time expenses. So yeah, just uh, edit this as needed, add um, more rows. And in the end, all the totals will be added up up here. So you have the total monthly income, net income. So after tax, we have the total monthly, monthly expenses and yeah, how much we saved. And it's not a coincidence that I've put a very simple but, but large graphic on the left because this is what we're trying to optimize. We want to um, you know, get as high a savings rate as it's possible. And, um, and yeah, that's the reason. And so for a following month, we, would, we could just copy paste these cells and open a new tab and copy paste it and edit as needed. And then what I like to do is there's a summary tab here uh, where I've prepared. This is kind of like the summary of your month and track it over time. So we have, um, yeah, basically columns D to F. Uh, we record just three numbers from those, from the November, the income, expenses, and savings. Uh, we enter it here, and it gives us this of course the savings rate. But then also it's important to add um, what is your what are your total invested assets. So here I would exclude a um, cash um, uh, because essentially column I here is calculating. How far are you from financial independence? And of course, this has to be dependent on some income generating assets. So like stocks and bonds, for example. And here we're using uh, 4%. In uh, cell C1, we enter the monthly average expenses uh, that we envision um, um, to reach financial independence. And this is what we're, it's calculating the financial independence goal as the monthly expenses times 12 to get the yearly expenses and then times 25 to have your uh, FI number. So I think for most, uh, what would make sense is to focus first on recurrent monthly expenses and to go through them uh, in a sort of a two-step uh, process. So first of all, try to identify which of the ones that you don't really need. Uh, if you have three or four TV subscriptions, for example, can you have the same amount of entertainment uh, only with one or two? Uh, what about the sort of magazine subscriptions that perhaps you don't really have time to read or the apps that you you barely use yet you continue to pay each month? So it's really important to identify some of these elements uh, that are really easy to declutter. It doesn't affect our lifestyle, but it, in the long term, it really kind of uh, puts spikes in the wheels uh, toward achieving financial independence. And in a second equally important step, I recommend to shop around and try to change uh, service providers for a lot of these recurrent expenses. So go through each one of these recurrent expenses and try to figure out insurance, phone, internet, um, utilities, energy, etc. This is always in a constant flux. It's constantly changing. And therefore, if you're not periodically taking a look at this, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. These small incremental wins in recurrent expenses, although they seem small in isolation, add up very quickly. And it's actually really motivating to see your savings rate increase as a result. And the next step, of course, is to try to go through the individual one-time expenses and to try to ask yourself whether these are sort of aligned with your goals and objectives. So I think that for both recurrent and non-recurrent expenses, it helps to have a financial independence calculator handy nearby so that you can kind of like gauge what impact it would have on your timeline to financial independence if you dropped a certain expense, if you changed the service provider. It's very motivating to see how this translates, um, how the change in savings rate changes to the timeline to reaching financial independence. Okay, so today we're using this financial independence calculator found on the website above, and we can close this uh, information. And let's go ahead and populate this uh, dashboard with a, an example. Let's go for the Marcus example. Uh, let's imagine he's 30 years old and has no investments at the moment. In, in this number, I recommend to put only your sort of, not your cash, but only your portfolio that's invested in stocks and bonds, uh, because that's kind of what's um, relevant here. So let's, okay, in this case, let's put these to zero, but you could yeah put the allocation of stocks and bonds however you wished if you already had some invested in your portfolio. And I think we said that Marcus was spending 50,000 a year and... Uh, spending 30,000 a year, sorry, and had a net income of 50. So the savings is 20K per year, which is 40% savings rate. Income growth, how much you expect uh, in real terms your salary to increase over time. So this is set at a very conservative 1%. You could add uh, two or three if you wanted, but I think it's fairly uh, good practice just to have conservative assumptions here. How much do you plan to spend in retirement? This can be a different number than you're spending. But um, yeah, for the moment, I, I would say that, you know, you want to fund a similar lifestyle that you have at the moment. And 
the target withdrawal rate, this is based on the 4% rule, but you can change this percent, but it basically means that uh, to reach your financial independence a target, which is 800,000, uh, you would be able to withdraw 4% per year, and that's this 30,000 per year without fear uh, of uh, depleting it. There's also a place here to put uh, taxes. This is actually quite a difficult calculation. Um, when you're when you're retired, a lot of the money that you have in your portfolio is already after tax. So that's the reason why the tax is probably lower than what you have with when you when you have a salary. But then, yeah, secondly, you're you're re you're retired or you don't have a salary, so your bracket again is can be lower. But I, th I think this seven percent is actually quite a good uh, starting point. And and finally, you can add what's uh, stock returns you expect here. I recommend to put something quite conservative, maybe six percent per year, and and yeah. So it's basically each time you you change one of these numbers, it shows the impact it has on your financial independence timeline. So Marcus reaches here uh, financial independence in eighteen years, uh, but you, yeah, you can play around and see how uh, if Marcus managed to reduce uh, his monthly expenses by a little bit over a hundred euros. So let's say he goes down from thirty thousand to twenty eight thousand. He would go from uh, 18 years to financial independence to 17 years. So yeah, a full year of um, cutting back your career. So yeah, I recommend going both with the recurrent and non-recurrent expenses. Try to figure out which ones are aligned uh, with what's important to you and have this tool uh, in the background to use in combination. As you critically review your monthly recurrent and non-recurrent expenses, I recommend the three-step framework that I presented in a previous video, which I'll link here above. And it's basically to consider your expense in relation to how much time does that expense cost? So what was the effort, the amount of hours you had to spend in your job to be able to afford it? Secondly, what, how much of your future does it cost? So how does it impact your financial independence timeline? Does it like extend your, a certain purchase, does it extend your financial timeline um, by a year, by five months, etc.? And thirdly, whether it's aligned with your values. So I recommend to ch check out this video because it goes into detail on how exactly you can do this. And it's a very useful tool to, to use in parallel to, to this uh, optimizing and tracking your savings rate. All right, that's all for today. I hope you found valuable the content of this video, the information provided or the tools. If so, please let me know in the comments or if you had any question related to the content. Okay, thanks a lot for staying until the end. Good luck, take care, and I hope to see you in the next video.